Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Wasu, back again for another video. This time I'm doing it on the Cambridge Lower Secondary Checkpoint for Mathematics Paper 2, October 2023. You may use a calculator since this is Paper 2, and let's start. Question 1. Drawing on the sum of the exterior angles of an equilateral triangle. Since the equilateral triangle is a regular polygon, the exterior angles will have a sum of 360 degrees. That's our answer. Question 2. Revolving on the unit that would be most suitable for measuring the mass of a ship. Light year. This is wrong since this is a measurement of length, not mass. And megabyte. This is a measurement of storage space on a computer. And is not mass. Now microgram. Yes, this is a mass unit, but then it's very small. Look at the weight of a ship. Or correctly, the mass of a ship. It's much, much, much higher than even a gram. And talking about micrograms will have too many zeros. Therefore, the answer is a ton. It is equivalent to a million kilograms. And this is actually about the mass of ships. Could be even more, actually. Question 3. Mia says, why is 3 more than x squared? Write down a formula for y in terms of x. So y is 3 more, or 3 plus, x squared. It's as simple as that. That's the answer. Question 4. Here are the first 5 terms of a sequence. Why the next 2 terms? So we can see that we are adding 3, next adding 5, adding 7, adding 9 to get to the next terms. And the differences are adding by 2. Or in other words, the plus 3 and plus 5, they have the second difference of 2 and plus 5 and plus 7 also have second difference 2. So the second difference is always 2. Now that means we have to add 2 again to get plus 11 here. I'll write that down. Plus 11 for the first difference and the actual number is going to be 35 plus 11 which is 46. Now we need a plus 13 since we add 2 again. So we get 46 plus 13, 59. These two are the next terms. That's the answer. Question 5. Here's the net of a triangular prism. It's formed from three rectangles and two right-angled triangles. Tick to show each of these facts about the faces of the prism is true or false. Three faces have the same area. Well, the answer here is true. Why? Well, let's find the area of all the faces. We know that this length is going to overlap with this one over here. It's going to be touching this edge over here. Therefore, this is 13 centimeters. And same for this. This one here is going to be 12 since it overlaps with these edges of the triangles. This has to be congruent to this triangle over here. Therefore, we have 12, 13, 5. And now we can find the areas of everything. So 12 times 6 is 72. 13 times 6 is 78. 5 times 6 is 30. Now for the triangles, it's half times base times height. So let's say that this is the base, this is the height for both triangles. This is the base, this is the height here. So half times 5 times 12. That's simply 30, and same for below. So these three have the same area. So of course, three faces have the same area is true. The area of the largest face is 72 centimeters squared. This is false. As we know, the largest face area is 78 centimeters squared since it has the highest area. Therefore, this is false. It's not 72. That's the answer. Question six, point A has coordinates one comma two. Point A is first translated by vector 3, 1 to give point B. It's then translated by vector 0, minus 5 to give point C, which is the coordinates of point C we have to find. So vector 3, 1 to give point B, that's the translation. So that means 3 units to the right and 1 unit up. Point B is 4, 3. And now translating by vector 0, minus 5, that means we simply go 5 units downwards. That gets us to point C. And that point is 4, comma, minus 2. That's our answer. Let's go to question 7. Pencils can be bought in small packets or large packets. Mike buys M small packets and N large packets. Altogether, he buys 86 pencils. Draw a ring around the equation that represents this situation. A small packet has 3 pencils, a large packet has 5. So if he has M small packets, the number of pencils he has from small packets is going to be M times 3, or 3M. Three and the number of pencils he has from large packets is going to be 5, which is 
number of pencils per packet multiplied by n, which is the number of packets he buys. So 3m plus 5n is the total number of pencils, which is 86. And therefore, the first equation is correct. That's our answer. Let's go to question 8. The graph shows the cost in dollars of different massive strawberries and raspberries. The cost is shown here in two lines. Find how much more 1 kg of raspberries cost than 1 kg of strawberries. So we can see the both are straight lines, so the mass and cost are directly proportional. So let's see the cost of 1 kilogram of strawberries. That's simply going to be $6. And as for raspberries, we cannot find this directly from the graph since the scale is given 5, 10, 15. But since this is a straight line, we can take the cost of 5 kg and divide by 5 to get the cost of 1 kilogram. So cost of 5 kilograms is 50. So 5 kilograms, $50. 1 kilogram is simply going to be 50 by 5, which is $10. So the difference between the cost is 10 minus 6, which is $4. That's our answer. Question 9. It will take 5 workers 12 days to harvest some apples. Calculate how many workers are needed to harvest these apples in 4 days. Well, logically, if we have a higher number of workers, that means the number of days required will decrease or it will be less amount of time. So we want this to decrease by 3 or we're dividing this by 3. So if one of them increases and the other decreases, they are called inversely proportional, right? Inversely proportional. Therefore, if 1 is divided by 3, the other has to be inversed, multiplied by 3. So that's going to be 5 times 3, which is 15 workers. That's our answer. Question 10. Complete each statement to make it true. 8 by 4x equals dash by x. We can see that 8 by 4x, we can write this as 8 by 4 times 1 by x. That's going to be 2 times 1 by x, which is 2 by x. Therefore, we write 2 over here. y to the power 11 times dash equals y to the power of 12. Well, if you multiply y to the power 11 times something, we get y to the 12. So you bring this to this side, we divide by y to the power of 11. And therefore, dividing means we subtract the exponents since they have the same base, or they have y as their base. So that'll be, that'll be simply y to the power of 12 minus 11, or in other words, simply y. Now for a third one. Dash squared equals w to the power of 10. So if you want to find out what dash is, we have to square root w to the power 10 because the inverse of a square when you bring it to the other side is square root. So this dash is going to be equal to square root of w to the power 10. Or in other words, w to the power 10 to the power half. This is the same thing as a square root, exponenting to half power. So if we do power of a power, or in other words, we exponent something which has already been exponentiated. We simply multiply the exponents. So 10 times half. That's simply w to the power of 5. And that'll be a blank. That's the answer. If you want to check, w to the power of 5 whole squared. That's w to the power of 5 times 2. w to the power of 10. That's correct. Question 11. A train company says that the probability that a train arrives at a station on time is 0 0.85. Ahmed selects a random sample of 80 trains arriving at the station. Calculate the expected number of these trains that arrive at the station on time. So if there's 80 trains and the probability that a train arrives on time is 0 0.85, that means the expected number is simply 80 times the probability, which is 0 0.85. And doing this, we get 68 trains, which arrive on time. That's our answer. Question 12. A. Draw lines to match the equivalent inequalities. x minus 1 is greater than 2. Bring the 1 to the other side, the minus 1 becomes plus 1. So that's just 3 over here. So x is greater than 3 is the correct one. 2x is greater than 2. So if we multiply by 2, the inverse operation when you bring it to the other side is dividing by 2. So x is greater than 1. And we draw a line there. Now the last one, of course, has to be x greater than 2, but we can also prove this by simply bringing the divide by 2 to the other side, x is greater than 1 times 2, since multiplication is the inverse of division. So x is greater than 1 times 2, x is greater than 2. And we draw a line there. 
B, solve the inequality. 11 minus 2x less than or equal to 20. That means minus 2x is less than or equal to 20 minus 11. Minus 2x is less than or equal to 9. And now we can do x is less than or equal to 9 by minus 2. Well, the only thing wrong with this step is because we're dividing by a negative number. And if we're dividing by a negative number, we actually have to flip the sign. Now it's less than or equal to, so we just erase that and write greater than or equal to. And therefore, x is greater than or equal to minus 4.5. That's the answer.